Paul, Fiona Paltridge here with you again for another Artist Gang Tuesday video for Donna Downey Studios. And in true Donna Downey style, you can see I've put plenty of gesso on my page. I'm going to do a little art journal spread for you today using some light golden fluid acrylics and some Donna Downey stencils. Now, I don't always gesso all of my pages. Sometimes I gesso them just a little bit. Other times I want to completely cover them. Because I'm using acrylic paints today, I wanted a really good coverage in this journal. Now, disaster time. I do like to try new things. And so this time around, what I decided I was going to do was a transfer. So I got out some gel medium and I popped it on the page and I printed out a picture of my beautiful daughter and then I transferred the picture onto the page. Now, I'm not saying it didn't work. It just didn't work how I wanted it to. So you can see that as I begin to rub away the top layer, which is the bottom layer, but we'll call it the top layer of paper, you can see that the transfer is actually coming through. It's quite fine. Now, the mistake I had made was that I had printed the picture too dark. My line of thinking was that if I was going to transfer it onto the paper, that I would need to make sure that those colours were really rich. The problem was, is my printer doesn't think that the colours should be really rich, and so it printed it quite dark. And look, I was really happy with it until I added the colour. The colours I added were Golden Light Fluid Acrylics in the Pyrrole Orange, the Quinacridone Crimson, Quinacridone Red, and then I added some Fluorescent Pink and some Fluorescent Red as well. Now... These colours are quite bold, so because they're very, very bright, it made my dull transfer even duller still. But I persisted, because that's what I do. <laughs> You'll see later that I didn't, I fixed it. And here I'm just adding a little bit of detail. I've put my background colour down. I've not really thought about where I've put it. I try to be as random as I possibly can. Now, just with a small brush, I added a little bit of detail. This is where I decide I just can't keep going with this. I print out a second picture of my beautiful daughter and I just put it over the top. Now, I've also covered it with a um, layer of the gel medium because I want to protect this photo and I know the way that I art journal I'm pretty messy and I get stuff everywhere so this way I'm sure that once it dries I've got a nice plastic covering over the top of the photo so if I do accidentally get some paint on a nose which I've done before then I can come in with a baby wipe and I can remove it quite easily now I'm adding some white it's just titanium white um, I like the white space on this page, but the page itself, I don't like the texture of the paper. So um, I decided that I was going to add some white paint to the white spaces. It also gives me a really good area to add these little details that you can see me adding in with my fingers. My nail te technician takes one look at me when I walk in the door and just frowns. But that's okay. I paint with my fingers. She's pretty good at fixing it all. So here I add a little bit more of the titanium white in the literal white spaces. It's, um, it's just something that I like to do. It's, I like the white space. I think it adds some interest to the page. And if I'm putting paint down on the paper, then later on down the track, I can um, add some other mediums over the top and I know that they're not going to soak in as much. So I just continue to make some marks with my fingers. I really like the white over the top of the, um, the bright colours with the orange, the crimson and the red and the fluoros, but probably not a straight line of it. So you can see here that while I'm drying, I, I find that I, I can't get as random as I'd like. So what I do is I do two things at once because I'm not very good at that. So while I'm drying, I smear the paint over the page. And because I'm sort of half concentrating on the drying and not burning myself or my page, and I'm not concentrating so much on my right hand, which is doing all the paintwork, it tends to be a lot more random. It's just one of those little tricks that I've learned. Now, no journal page is complete for me without some old book pages. I am absolutely addicted to ephemera. I will spend my weekends hunting around in little stores. If I travel to places to teach, the first thing I ask my host or people that are in the classes is, where are the good secondhand shops so I can go and get some ephemera? While I was in Paris this year, I went and got some French books and they are so precious to me. I haven't had an opportunity to actually rip them up yet. I think I might scan them first because I might not ever get any more. 
So I'm just applying them with some gel medium. I think I'm using an impasto gel today because, well, it was on my desk and that's just what I reach for. Um, and I've done a similar stalactite, stalactite sort of arrangement of the papers. Some of them are hanging over the edge. Some of them are, you know, taller than others. Just to give it some random look. Now, this is one of my favourite Donna Downey stencils. It's called Silhouette Trio and all the links for the products that I've used in this tutorial are on the blog post which accompanies this video. Now, I this is a fresh one. I haven't used it before. How cool is that? I always love cracking the seal on a new um, stencil. This, I decided that I wanted both the positive and the negative. I wanted it to be, whatever I added, I wanted it to be transparent. So I chose to use some watercolours. Um, I've got some Daniel Smith watercolours here and the colour that I'm using is called Shading Violet. It's perfect for shading. The transparency um, enables the book pages to still be seen through the paint, even though these watercolours have got an amazing pigment. Because I'm actually applying them over the top of acrylic paint, they become uh, a little more transparent and you can see the colours through it, which creates a whole new shade of um, colour, especially using the shading violet. So what I've done here is I've created three figures, in um, two in the, in the negative and one in the positive. Have I got that around the right way? Anyway, either way, it doesn't matter. And then I, what I decided was that I wanted the edges of them to be um, a little darker, so I've come in with the shading violet um, with a paintbrush this time around the edge. Um, I really love how they stand out on the back of the, like on that pink background. I also added um, a little bit of the quinacridone rose. I really thought the colour would um, complement the rest of the page. And again, being see-through, it was lovely to add the colour, but without actually having the opacity that the acrylic paints from the Golden Fluid Acrylics creates. So here's the third little figure again, all the way around the outside to make it a little bit deeper and make it stand out more. Later on down the track, you'll see me working around these figures again with lots of different mediums because I really want them to, um, to stand out as a feature on the page. Um, adding a few more little... Um, intricate details with the watercolors with the, the Daniel Smith watercolors um, the colors here oh, I've got a splash got a splash um, the quinacridone rose and then I also introduced some of the transparent pyrrole orange because I'd used pyrrole orange in the golden light fluid acrylics I knew it was going to work well time for some more stenciling Donna Downey has the best stencils when it comes to phrases words sayings this one is just beautiful it's called Human Soul and it says the desire to create is one of the deepest desires of the human soul. Absolutely beautiful. So what I did was I decided that I wanted a really, really rich, dark black paint. So I'm using a, like a Mars black here through a stencil, through sorry, with a sponge through the stencil and it came up really magnificently. It's, it's quite a feature on the page. Again, I just wanted to add a few more of those little details. I do this throughout my journaling. I never, I never quite know what step comes next. When I teach journaling, it's really quite difficult because I'm a bit random. I'm all over the place. I don't necessarily do my background and then do my stenciling and then do my details. I find that my detail work happens in amongst all of my steps. If I believe that I need a little bit more detail, I'll add it. If I don't need it, then I'll go on to a stenciling stage or some background, more background work. But here, I just loved these Daniel Smith watercolours so much, in particular this quinacridone rose, that I wanted to include it into the journal a bit more. I also wanted to include the um, fluorescent pink in the golden light fluid acrylics because you can never have too much fluorescent pink, in my opinion. Time for a bit more detailed work over the top now. and got to make sure that it's fairly dry because these are Neocolor 2 pencils or crayons or sticks whatever you want to call them they're water soluble wax pastels so if my background was too wet um, what I find is they don't really dig in to the texture or the um, the layer of paint that's there they just tend to swish over the top um, and I'm really like I said earlier I'm just going around the outside and making a bit of a feature of these three silhouettes that I've added onto the page the white um, purple a yellow green and then the reddish orange 
Now, the other thing that I decided was to add some charcoal stick. Again, just to give a really defined outline around the outside of the silhouette shapes. And I drew a gorgeous little love heart in one of the um, middle of one of them that I'd made a little bit darker than the other two. You can see that they're pink too. Um, you can still see through them quite easily. Um, but the dark one, it's starting to get a little bit tricky to look through. But it's good because it becomes a feature. Now, this was um, a bit of a risk to take, but I kind of needed it. It was such a pink orange red page that I wanted to add a complementary color. And the comp complementary color that I chose was the yellow green from the Neo Color 2s. It's very, very bright. It's, it's a really lime green. But once I started, I just didn't want to stop. I just, it was perfect. It absolutely brought out all of the pink and the shading all in one. I just added a little bit more journaling and a bit of doodling with my favourite pencil, which is just a 6B. Um, I like the smoothness of a 6B. I think it runs really, really well. And then I just added a couple of little embelly features, a couple of love hearts and a few more squiggles around the circles. This is one of my favourite things to do. Again, I always try to make sure that it's fairly dry when I do this, although I don't mind the fact that the pencil sometimes moves the paint around when it's still wet. I quite like that look too. But I added a little pink heart here because this is my girl and she's got my heart. And then I think I'm pretty much done. Oh, now look at that. More fluorescent pink. Because what did I say? You can never have enough fluorescent pink. Thanks for hanging around. I'll see you again next time. Bye. <laughs>